Some guy at LinkedIn uh, didn't believe that I could create crud apps in seconds, uh, so I felt compelled <laughs> to proving him wrong. So here I am inside of Magic Cloud. I can connect to any database I have using the databases and providing a connection string to PostgreSQL MySQL SQL Server here, at which point I will gain access to that particular database in uh, SQL Studio. I already have an existing database here called Chinook, but you can really use any database you wish. Here you can see the schema of uh, this particular database. As you can see, it's got like roughly 12 tables. So it's, it's an open source SQL Lite example uh, database with example data. So now I can take this database, I can click create, I can click endpoint generator, and I can choose this database here now allowing me to configure one table at a time if I wish, which gives me much more configuration options, or simply generate HTTP endpoints for every single CRUD verb that exists for every single table in the system. In addition to, I need to emphasize, adding left joints, doing verbose filtering, adding aggregate function uh, functions and distinct functions, etc., etc. And as you can see now, the system produced 9,200 lines of code for me. If I now go to Hyper-ID, I expand modules, I expand Chinook, I can already at this point have a look at the code the system produced for me. And every single file inside of this folder called Chinook there are 99 files, was automatically generated when I click the button. And if I give focus to code mirror, I click function F5, I can immediately execute my HTTP endpoint, at which point you will see JSON being returned from the uh, backend, according to what albums and stuff like that I happen to have in my database at that particular point in time. And uh, the system produces code, which is a really big deal. Why? Because this allows me to modify the code, contrary to Postgres and GraphQL, which doesn't really allow, allow for injecting business logic into your endpoints. This allows me to actually mo modify the resulting code, allowing me to actually add business logic to my uh, code. So I'm going to remove this and save the file. And now for a bonus item, I am going to actually create an AI chatbot or an AI agent wrapping this particular database. I'm going to choose machine learning here now and click and uh, create a new type. I'm going to call mine Chinook and choose the flavor of AI agent and click save. And I now have an AI agent that I can use as my host for the AI functions I want to associate with this particular type. So now at this point, I could choose training data and I could choose type and choose Chinook here and add one and one function at the time. If you look here, are my album related functions <clears throat> allowing me to do CRUD on albums in addition to aggregate and group by and distinct and counts and stuff like that. However, there's an even easier way allowing me to go to Hyper ID here now, expand modules, choose the Chinook I hover over the Chinook I choose the flash icon, choose my type Chinook and simply click generate. What's happening now is that the system is recursively traversing every single Hyper Lambda file inside of this folder recursively. And it's generating an AI function for every single Hyper Lambda file it finds inside of here and then it is doing what I refer to as meta prompt engineering which basically implies creating one individual rag based training snippet for every single hype lambda file we happen to have in the system resulting in that I actually have a rag database that allows me to match records from that database according to my intent, such that if I tell the LLM I want to create a new album, then the LLM is automatically going to actually know how to invoke my functions. If we go back to manage, we go to machine learning, we click training data here now and we look at any one of these guys by random, you will see basically it's a function invocation declaration, which is transmitted to the LLM as RAG training data during questioning allowing the LLM to actually understand how to invoke functions. Now, if I choose types here and I choose to click vectorize on my Chinook type here now, what the system is doing, it's automatically creating embeddings for each individual training snippets. There are 98 training snippets in my database. That means it's going to create 98 embeddings for each individual training snippet. <clears throat> Thank you.
And now that the system is done, I can go to app.inero.io and notice you can do this today. You can go to app.inero.io and test this out. I'm going to leave the Chinook type here for, some, for a while. But you have to choose the Chinook type here in the dropdown. But if I now choose that guy and I tell it to list all functions, you will see that actually the system is smart enough using metadata retrieval to understand every single function it can actually invoke. And as you can see here now, it's going to end at uh, 105 or something because we have like five function invocation declarations also in our system message or something. So let's see, okay, so it ended up at 102. Now I can tell the system to, for instance, um, speak out loud and clear. I want to create a new album. And now you will see the system is small enough to realize it, it needs some parameter, uh, primarily being the title. To create a new album, I will need the following information. Title, the title of the album, artist ID, the ID of the artist associated with the album. Please provide these details so I can proceed with creating the new album for you. The name of the album was the guy at LinkedIn was wrong and don't pass in the artist ID, just uh, rely upon the defaults. This is probably going to fail when I, uh, yeah, because it's, uh, it uh, has a It seems that effect. I encountered an access denied error while trying to create the album. This could be due to permission. Create a new artist called Thomas uh, LinkedIn Hansen. It seems that I encountered an... Sorry about that. Create endpoint generator. Choose my Chinook database here now. Choose overwrite and I need to modify and remove all authorization. I kind of forgot to do that. So let's uh, remove authorization requirements and just overwrite our existing endpoints. You see, by default, the system uh, generates endpoints that can only be accessed by admin users and root users. Uh, my user in the front end is neither. So uh, I'm going to have to remove authorization. Speak out loud and clear. Create a new artist called Thomas LinkedIn Hansen. Then, when you're done creating this artist, I want to create a new album. I want the album to be named The Guy at LinkedIn Was Wrong. Thank you. So now you see it um, created Thomas LinkedIn. The album titled The Guy at LinkedIn Was Wrong has been successfully created for the artist Thomas LinkedIn Hansen. Can you count how many albums you have? There are a total of 356 albums in the database. Uh, I want to uh, retrieve all artists sorted uh, by name but only artists that starts out with uh, the character B. Here are the artists whose names start with the character B sorted by name. Name, Baby, Consuelo, Backbeat, Banda, Black, Rio, Barry Wordsworth and BBC Concert Orchestra. Barone Vermelio, Battlestar. I'm going to stop it there. And before I wrap up the video, let me go into Create SQL Studio. Choose SQL View. Select all from albums. Sorted by uh, or third by. Mm, album ID, D, 
descending limit file. And as you can see here now, the album that guy at LinkedIn was wrong was successfully inserted into the database. And this creates, a, a, allows me to use any CRUD axiom uh, from within my LLM using natural language. So I'm sorry to the guy on LinkedIn, you were wrong and I am right. But hey man, have a nice day.